Hello, this is Sunil Manji, Principal SC at Cloudera. The objective of today's recording is to rapidly uh, do a demonstration on Flink SQL or SQL Stream Builder. And those of you that are, uh, need access to SQL Stream Builder, there's two ways of going about it. One is through Cloudera Data Hub, which is right here. Or if you want to simply download this to your laptop or to any machine, uh, you can go to the CSA Community Edition. Uh, it's free. You download it and you can run or anything I'm going to talk about today, you can run there. So the demonstration is to rapidly uh, run an observability, uh, observability use case. For example, observability like fraud detection. And oftentimes as developers, before we go and over invest in a certain technology, we want to prototype it. We want to play with it. Right? And that's essentially what I'm trying to get at here is providing some assets getting access to CSA community and run the demonstration. I give you all the artifacts and then you can play with it from there. So that's one part of the housekeeping. The other piece is Flink uh, community has built a lot of cool tools around uh, data generation. And the data generation capability, if you Google for Flink Faker or search for Flink Faker, uh, you will find that there's many, many artifacts. And within this one, this is a Flink Faker here, and I click on Demo Web Application, and it takes me over here. And what's really cool about this is that you can plug this into your Flink SQL, and it will generate random data. So again, oftentimes when we're going through engineering cycles, uh, getting access to real data is just not possible because we're just doing prototyping, right? So it's a science project for all intents and purposes. So to run our science project, we need data. So Flink makes that super easy. And I'll show you where we use some of this stuff. So once you have SQL Stream Builder either on your laptop or a machine or in Data Hub, you'll get you'll see this web page. And this is where you can start typing in your SQL. And this is the, the assumption on this video, or this recording is that the, those that are listening have some familiarity with SQL. Uh, so I'll do this, I'll start typing in some SQL statements here and we'll do we'll do a quick review. I'll copy and paste the table here and we'll scroll into this. What does this mean? So you can see here that I want to create a temporary table. It's called customer inferences. And the customer inferences has a few fields, which is a customer ID, account number. Uh, what is their center latitude and center longitude? And then max inferred distance and max inferred amount. So this is essentially uh, demoing where there's, there's some sort of model that would be running saying that uh, based on the customer's last transaction, where are they, where's their center, right? Just because I live in Houston, Texas or Chicago, Illinois, and, but I, you know, I may have traveled somewhere else, did a credit card transaction. Well, that moment that a credit transac transaction has been posted, that is my new center. And then from there, any transactions that happen within a t when some sort of time bound, it needs to calculate the distance. So that's essentially what it's saying. It's just calculating the inferred Latin long. And how I do that is, again, using the Flink Faker uh, data generation tool. And over here, you can see how many rows per second I need, the, the, the IDs, and, and, and it tells me a latitude and longitude. A ton of goodness here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this statement. and the table has generated successfully. So I'll create another table, click on new job at the top, copy and paste my second table here. And here, this is credit card charges. So what is credit card charges? This is the charges that are coming in real time. And we have the customer ID, the lat and long, this is the lat and long of where the transaction posted, the location and the charge amount. And Again, the, the Flink Faker tool does a great job of generating the data. You can see here that I'm generating a number between 1 and 1,000, lat and long, uh, the location, and, and then the charge amount. I'm going to go ahead and run this as well, and it has created successfully. So nothing special here. Just the cool thing about this is Flink is able to generate all the data for me. So at this point, what I want to do next is join those two tables, right? We have streaming data coming in for credit card transactions, right? Which is the, the CC charges, which is streaming data. And then we also have another table called customer inferences. And the customer inferences is a table that will tell us whether the transaction that's flowing through CC charges, those credit card charges, is legit. 
or is it fraud, right? And how we do that is we, we run a SQL statement and put it in my screen here. And yes, it's, it's, there's a lot here, but it's pretty simple. What I do is I basically join the credit card table, charges table to the customer inferences table. I join on customer ID and customer ID. And then I basically take a look at the, the distance and I, I determine if the distance or if the charge amount is greater than the inferred charge amount, right? So uh, in, in the inferred charge amount is basically, we take a look at what is the historical, historically, what has this individual customer purchased and is it large and based on, you know, certain count of figures, right? We're, we're kind of manipulating the data here because it's a faker. And then the other thing we look at is distance. And I think this is pretty cool. So this this uh, particular SQL statement, as you can see, Flink SQL is quite robust in, in its SQL support. It's a calculating the distance. So it's basically saying where the distance, the computer distance center is of the customer, and then infer it, and then related to where the tr credit card transaction came in, look at the distance. And if the distance is too far, then something's wrong. So for example, if I posted a transaction in Chicago, Illinois, and then 10, 10 minutes later, I did another transaction in New York. Well, there's no way that that's possibly happening, right? So we're looking at some max and for a distance, like how far can Sunil go within a certain time bound, right? So that's essentially what we're doing here. I'm gonna go ahead and run this SQL. And what this will provide us is, it will crunch through the credit card transactions. And anytime it finds that either the max amount or the inferred distance is beyond this uh, beyond something that's within an acceptable bound, it'll flag it as a uh, fraud transaction. So now data is flowing through, and it's slowly finding fraud transactions as they stream in. I'm going to stop the stream so we can go and or stop the analytic. One of the things that I really like about this is what I call unsupervised analytics or unsupervised observability. You don't have to monitor this or constantly run SQL to determine where are your fraud transactions. This is constantly running, right? These transactions. So think of this as, as the transaction is posted, we can have the sync or where this transaction is posted into Kafka, for example, or we can have it alerted to some application that you know, this is fraud. So why, why I call this unsupervised is there doesn't have to be, there's no need for an individual to constantly run this query. Flink does that for you. So let's stop this query and take a look at the results. So you can see here that I have, I'm going to pick on this transaction. This is the account number, the charge amount, and the distance. And what it's saying is that the max inferred distance that this individual could go is 9,600 9, miles. And the distance here is 29, so that's okay. That's, that's not fraud based on distance, but it says the max inferred amount is 84.26, which and and the actual charge amount is 97.86, which means that we flagged the charge because within our model we found that this this charge amount is greater than what we uh, what we could uh, what we have accepted as a bound. Let's take a look at another distance one. So this is an interesting one right here. Uh, we'll pick on this transaction. The charge amount uh, is 4209 and the distance is 77060. And what we've inferred as the max distance, the center where that trans customer is, uh, their max distance that they could have traveled over that period of time is 6090. And what they've actually traveled is 7060, which is greater. So we say, hey, that is, that is uh, fraud. And oh, by the way, the in, in the max inferred amount is 85, which is less, which is more than 92, uh, 4209. So that means the charge amount is legit, but the max distance is not. So we flag that as as fraud. So this SQL is, in my opinion, not too complicated. But what if we want to wrap this logic of calculating the distance based on that law within a function, right? And that, that is one of the capabilities within SQL Stream Builder. So let's do a, a, a simple function. I'll click on functions here, and I'll create function, and I'll give it a name. And the name will the name will be distance between, and we'll just give a description, distance between two geo, geo points, 
JavaScript is totally fine. And in my example, I have the output returning as a float because uh, that's the distance between the two points. And over here, I have four inputs. I'm going to add, oh, excuse me, I do have four floats. So because they're geo points, they're floats. And then I'm going to copy uh, and paste my function on the bottom here. This is JavaScript, so nothing fancy. It's essentially doing what I did in SQL within JavaScript. It accepts four, four floats and does a calculation of the distance between the geo points and then returns back a float. I'm going to go ahead and save this. So now my function has been saved. Go back to compose and I want to leverage it. I'm going to click on new job here and my newly minted SQL which I'll post this in the article as well in Cloudera Community Connection. Uh, all the assets, all the tables, everything will be posted in the article so that uh, anyone reviewing this vi video or this uh, recording can go back and run the demonstration themselves. So this newly minted SQL is doing the same thing, but instead of having all that, you can see I'm calling the distance between uh, function. It's in accepting as an input as lat long of the credit card transaction and the credit card uh, uh, inferred center Latin long. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm just checking, hey, is, is the max, is, is the distance, the center distance greater than what we've inferred based on the credit card transaction coming in and then also the charge amount, right? Doing both of them. So let's run this SQL showing how we leverage a function within SQL in the SQL Stream Builder. And as you can see that the SQL is running, it's giving us the exact same output, account number, charge distance, max inferred distance, and max inferred amount. So it looks like we've hit per pay dirt. Quick review, uh, everything here, uh, the entire product is available as a community edition for you to download. Everything I've done here is, is uh, nothing's proprietary. I'll host, provide all my table creates and SQLs in, in an article. Uh, that I'll reference in Cloudera Community Connection. And what we essentially did is we took a table that um, uh, calculates center based on geolocation and also calculates the max amount that a customer could theoretically um, charge. And then we joined that to a streaming, uh, uh, a stream where it has credit card transactions live coming through and we join that together to find out if the center based on the center where the customer's last transaction was if it's out of bounds or out of scope of what they could have possibly done so again Sunil in, in, in Chicago Illinois and then 10 minutes later making a charge in New York it's probably not possible uh, as long as it is me then it will flag that as fraud thanks for listening